Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and welcome to another episode of me feeding my hobby of collecting OCG exclusive cards. Um, I'm gonna be honest, like, two, maybe three years ago, I never would have thought of myself as someone who would, like, buy imported goods. It just felt something that was outside of my reach, but... Ever since I got started, what can I say, I've been hooked. Um, the cards that we get from the OCG have such wonderful foiling compared to what we get over here. Uh, and it's been such a really good icebreaker. I've been going back to locals recently, and everyone's of course always asking about trades. Uh, whenever they flip through it and they find this section, uh, the, the eyes go wide, uh, they're amazed, uh, they've never seen anything like this. It's, uh, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a cool status symbol. And on top of all these ones, I'm actually starting a little Albaz lore section in the back uh, from the things that I've collected by importing the OCG cards. Uh, we've got, uh, check it out, we got the Branded Fusion, fusing uh, Mirror Jade and Lobelion into Alba Lenatus. Uh, we have the tokens from the OCG structure deck. Uh, we have high rarity versions of Albaz and Ecclesia. We have a little Aluber token in here. Uh, I think that's really funny. Uh, and we have all the, uh, some other ancillary cards. We have like a Tri Brigade row at the bottom. We have a Fleur kind of thing going on here. She's in the token. She's in this counter trap. And these are uh, her two little bumpkins. Uh, and then we have a top row here. And we're missing a spot. Now what I'm looking for in Duelist Nexus, the box that I've got hidden in here, uh, is getting uh, either an Eternal Ice Grave to put in there or a holographic rare version of the new Stardust Dragon. That's the cover card for this set. They still do holographic rares over there in the OCG. Just another thing that they get over there that we don't get here. Now, if you want to join in on this epic adventure, you're going to want a service that gets this to you quickly and easily. And I've got just the service for you. Today's sponsor, Bai. Voice over Nova, take it away. By using Bai, you can get your hands on anything from Japan, using retailers like Mercari, Rakuten, and Yahoo Japan, meaning you can get some unique and awesome merch you can't find anywhere else. Here's how it works. You browse a variety of stores to find that perfect piece for your collection, and once you purchase it, all your items are sent to Bai's own warehouse where you can consolidate your order. So even if you get an OCG booster box from Mercari and a pair of Millennium item slippers from Rakuten, everything is wrapped up in one convenient and secure package before being sent to your doorstep. Now, if you're like me, you don't normally browse Japanese sites to make your purchases, so it might sound a little intimidating, but don't worry. There's actually an official Bai Discord server, which not only has a host of fellow enthusiasts ready to help you find what you're looking for, they also conduct monthly giveaways, which you definitely don't want to miss out on. When you're ready to start your journey to find cool collectibles and jaw-dropping Japanese exclusives, make sure to use my link in the description, because if you sign up using it, you get a 2,000 yen coupon that you can use to save on your first purchase, as well as supporting the channel at the same time. Thank you all so much for watching, now let's take a look at some of these goodies. Thank you again, VoiceOver Nova. I don't know what I'd do without you. I probably wouldn't be able to have a career like this, because I wouldn't be able to say anything. With that existential crisis out of the way, let's get to opening this box. Now, I've already taken the liberty of removing any uh, personal identifying information. Just a tip out there for anyone out there who's going to be showing stuff off on the internet. Make sure your packages do not have your name on them. Unfortunate things can happen if you do that. All right, and we're going to... Ooh, not too much. We don't want to damage it inside there, but we have to make sure we cut away from ourselves to ensure proper safety. You all know I used to work at a warehouse, right? You all know that I have that drilled in me. All right, so here are the air bubbles to help keep everything neat and tidy. Keep them from bouncing around in the box. This green envelope, I believe has something, we'll get to this in just a second. Let's go ahead and make sure everything is accounted for. This is likely where the deck box is gonna be in. Deck box, booster box. The booster box is going to be in here. I'm not getting one of those special edition things like last time, so there shouldn't be a deck box in here uh, unless they wanted to send along something super special. Um, So this here, I believe, is going to be a little figurine that I picked up what's going in here. Oh, yep, it's a little itty-bitty guy. I'm going to keep all of you in suspense really quick. Who could it be? What little gremlin did Nova get? 
and I'll tell you, it's not. Uh, comment really quickly. Uh, you you can see it kind of through the through the bubble wrap. Who is in the bag? Comment in the comments. Who is in the bag? You will find out shortly once I get you out of here. <laughs> in my attempts to build suspense, I've just made it more difficult for myself. Uh, it is Zadon of Final Fantasy IX fame. Uh, if you enjoy yourself a little JRPG stuff, I picked this guy up while I was getting some other things. Uh, this is going to be for Delilah. I'm going to go see if I can give this to her once we're done here, and I'll let all of you know how uh, she enjoyed it. But for now, we're going to go ahead and toss this over here, and now we're moving on to the main event. Let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, no, it's one of those, uh, oh, it's one of those people from the side kind of deals. All right, um... Yeah, you know, you don't just have to, you know, I, I, I usually get stuff for myself, and when I'm in the middle of buying things on Buy, I'm like, oh, the cool things that I can find here, the Yu-Gi-Oh things I can show off, but it's not just for Yu-Gi-Oh, and it's not just for you, it can be for your friends, your loved ones, your pets, your dueling dragons, here it is, sealed duelist nexus. Uh, this was, uh, I think with the extra mile on getting that extra box put together for it. Look at how pristine that look at the shrink wrapping on this. Look how sharp the edges are. Truly, the factory has sealed this quite well. And now, like ancient treasure hunters, we shall defile it so that we can get to the secrets within. <laughs> All right, but uh, you know, carefully because I want to like keep the box or something. Come on. Come on. Just a little, just a little a little I just I just want I want just like a little here you know what let's do the thing where we find the oh okay cool see that right in right in there that takes skill it's a master knifesman right here uh for legal reasons I must tell you that I do not know how to use a knife I, I say legal reasons for fun I don't know if there I'm under any kind of like legal obligation to let everyone at home know whether or not I can wield a knife correctly. All right. <clears throat> the collector's value on this box is dropping rapidly now that it's been exposed to Earth's oxygen. Let's go ahead and crack this open. I don't think we, we've opened one of these since Dimensional Force, so it's cool to see this again. Now I know a lot more about it. So this thing right here, we can kind of perforate this off. So this is a, like, box divider. I've seen, like, plastic versions of these in uh, the special sets we get, but um, they make a little... Oh, I, didn't, I didn't tear that off well at all. Okay, well, I will be forever shamed for not having done that correctly, but we can tear this off. And we can use this as, like, a field center. Uh, I say we. I'm going to use it. You're all going to have to buy your own box if you want to use it, because I'm not sharing. All right, so um, so you get this. Uh, they it, it, it's just part of the box. Nifty little extra thing, and they have plus one boosters. Um, I was uh, opening up Digimon a while ago when that first came out in the states, and there were plus one packs in here for buying a whole box. And uh, I wish another thing that you get from these that you don't get in uh TCG packs, just a little extra for buying a whole box. So what? hides within this secret pack. What is in here? I suppose we have kind of a replacement for that in the Lost Art things, like buying a box will easily get you over the $30 limit to get a Lost Art promotional thing. Um, but like, it's just not the same. It's just not the same as cracking it open and getting a little extra, little extra pack for investing in the box, you know? All right. <clears throat> All right, it's just one. It's just one special little little card, and it is... Oh, it is the new Instant Fusion replacement that summons the cards out of the deck. Oh, you know what? I have not set this to auto because it normally goes all over the ding darn place. Let me... There we go. I can manually focus it now. Take a look at this beauty. 
Yeah. Flame Swordsman and Dark Magician Knight together again for the first time for the last time. Expect this to see some very silly play in a deck near you. Alrighty, let's go ahead and off to the side here. And let's go ahead and start cracking open some of these Pacarinos. Uh, da 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 da. Now, I don't know which one to pull for the rarity to make sure that uh, we see the rarest one last. So we're just going to do this by uh, by ear here. Let's go ahead. We have dolphins. We have the new twin-headed King Rex. The dinosaur stuff is here. We have the new Mikonko trap card. We have... Uh, oh, yes. The, uh, the new Synchron stuff. Uh, and the new Illusion fusion spell for the chimera stuff chimera fusion i believe it's called uh yeah another thing i completely just forgot about in this set uh a new type if you're not up to date on Yu-Gi-Oh's uh developments in the ocg they introduced a new monster type called illusionists uh that have a lot uh to do with the actual original manga uh they didn't just pull it out of nowhere like cybers or psychics or worms uh, saying out of nowhere might be a bit disingenuous, but uh, it actually has like roots in the in the manga, which I think is really cool. Uh, here is uh, one of those illusion uh, shield guy. That's part of the whole combo they have. Here's the new Nemorelia, uh, the new Infernoble Knight field spell. Uh, this is going to be outrageous. Uh, the combos I've seen with people doing this is outstanding. Uh, the const reconstructed new world for Visa stuff. Uh, and we have, um, oh my goodness, I'm looking at this backwards. This is the R Antithemesis Magician, the thing that everyone is saying is a, is a Alistair card or a Magistus card. And it's got spell counters on there, so it has to be involved in the lore somehow. I, I, I believe that anything that says spell counter on there is, is part of the whole Magistus rigmarole. <clears throat> but uh, I haven't seen anything specific on there. Okay, here's the new uh, Chimera. Here's the... Uh, okay, uh, Manadium Ojama Yellow. Uh, look at it closely. You can see that... How close can I get this with the focus? How, how close can I... show you the truth here? Look at that Ojama Yellow, son of a gun. Manadium Trid, more like Manadium Ojama Yellow. Son of a gun. We've cracked it. We've also got the uh, Infernoble Fan Fiction and uh, the new uh, draw spell uh, that was inherited basically from uh, Rush Duels. Uh, there was a card that does something almost exactly like that. Uh, it sends monsters from your hand and or field, I believe. You can do field ones. Uh, until you send exactly 10 levels worth of monsters, and then you get to draw two. So, in practice, you're playing it in decks that run level 10 monsters so that it's just an archetypal draw two. Uh-oh, I didn't uh, enter into this pack with the correct opening, but we made it through anyway. Um, so, we'll see how many uh, Earth Machine train decks... Decide that they're going to utilize that. Uh, okay, Manadium, Trid, uh, the new Illusionist Chimera, the new... Uh, this pack is looking too familiar. Uh, this one is uh, a new Valance card. That is the uh, Arctis 12, the Earth one that isn't associated with either of the other ones for some reason. Uh, and the new Grenosaurus Retrain, uh, another twin-headed dinosaur monster. Uh... You know, I didn't know until this whole set came out that Grenosaurus counted as having two heads. The uh, it, it's the art is mostly focused on its big, burning mouth. Uh, but if you look closely, yeah, it's got a whole other mouth on its tummy that shoots lightning lasers. All right, uh, here is uh, one of the weird, um, I don't know what we would call them, off-brand reference monsters. There's one for, like, each extra deck type. Uh, this one is Gaia. Uh, here is one of the new Unchained monsters, the level 6 ones. Absolutely fantastic support. Uh, this one is, I don't think it's S4 support, but it acts uh, with some column stuff. Uh, and, of course, for all of the um, 
you know, all of our shippers out there. We now have Chiyomaru protecting Mascarena uh, from another S-Force. Uh, you love to see the solidarity. Uh, the World as One, uh, a very interesting Visus card. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if it gets used in a combination version of all the decks, but until then, it really is just a good way to revive the Visus clones. And this card, I, this has to be a trap hole, but for the life of me, I've looked over the set and I have no clue what in the heck this one is. All of you in the comments, uh, I'll, I will let you know that I've looked it up by the time you're watching this right now. But go ahead and let me know. Go ahead and pretend that once you turn off the screen, I turn into a series of latent pixels and bits uh, that doesn't exist until I'm called upon once again to make dad jokes. In, and in essence, that's kind of that's kind of true, uh, and I'll leave you to ponder that existential crisis as well. Uh, this is a little fire buppy, uh, Noah Jenk face reveal right here. Uh, more dolphins, that's good. Little dolphins. Uh, this is the new super ego cool battle trap. It has like a lot of different effects to it. Um, but they all basically boil down to, yeah, just go ahead and win this battle. Uh, and the new runic monster, Slepnir, uh, a level 9 that you can just summon right out of the extra deck with any of the runic spells, uh, lends further credence to the ability that you could play a combination runic generator deck, um, someone stop Dire from posting. Uh, on this video, it will be taken over. And one of the new res Rescue Waste monsters, uh, this is, uh, the one that if it leaves the field, you can summon one of your banished rescue aces except a level 8. Uh, so it's fantastic to summon off of the effect uh, of the new spell card that just summons right out of the deck. Um, it tributes a monster you control after that. I forget if it's specifically a rescue ace. Um, but if you just tribute the one, this guy that you just summoned, you get a free banished one. And you'll be banishing a lot thanks to... Your big level 10, 9? Uh, either way, here's another Buppy. Uh, this is my face reveal. Uh, here's another updated twin-headed King Rex. Here is the uh, Transcendental uh, Evolution Pill Beta. Uh, I look forward to seeing how well this takes off. Uh, the ability to summon just these really powerful dinos right out of the extract without having to like properly make them can be absolutely fantastic. Uh, here is uh, the set's latest, um, or rather the fan base's latest obsession. I've been seeing Kirabane artwork everywhere, and honestly, for good reason. Uh, they're angy, they're powerful, they have a lot of personality. And here's another one of those seeming reference cards, um, but whereas some of them are older cards, this is like, this just came out. This might be a reference to the Vanquish Soul boss monster. It looks very similar to it. I, I For life of me, I can't place anything else that it is. Uh, its materials are really weird, though. It requires, like, uh, a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck is one of them, and we already saw how Sprint did it, but, like, its other effects also require monsters that were special summoned from the extra deck. It's it's wild. If it sees play, uh, I'll be forced to read it again, but until then, it's a funny novelty. All right, let's go ahead here. So here's uh, a new Evolsar card, one of the... Uh, better pieces of support. It just gets you. I believe it just grabs you Evo Force right out of the deck, which is fantastic. Uh, another Infernoble Knight, so the combos keep going. Another Pearly card, so the combos keep going. This is an Altergeist card, and I want to destroy this card now that I see it. I realize now that by opening this box, I am risking uh, being a very angry guy, but I'm going to repress those feelings. And we're going to move on. We have another Chimera Fusion. I didn't really talk anymore about the Illusionists because I move on to something. Uh, an interesting facet of all Illusion monsters is that they share an effect where no monsters can be destroyed by battle in battles involving them. So they can't be destroyed. What they're battling isn't destroyed uh, because, you know, you're, you're punching at shadows. You're punching at things that aren't there. Um, but they can still do damage, so they can still deal, like, mental wounds, which I think is really cool. Uh, and some of the more powerful ones uh, kind of work around that, right? Like, some of them have multi-attacks, but, like, you can hit the same monster over and over again, so you don't have to destroy it. Uh, really, really nifty stuff here. Uh, speaking of which, one of the funnier illusion monsters, this is, like, 
Cornfield Coadle or something? Um, I didn't look into the name, why they're named certain ways. Why is the cornfield involved? Uh, speaking of altergeist that I'm unhappy with, another altergeist, yay. Uh, I'm happy again, Mascarena. Ooh, hello. This is another one of those really important Nemorelia cards to help get the extra deck thinned. Uh, oh, and we have a little Earth's Arctic Polar Bear, uh, Earth's Arctic Plus Drytron. They introduced those to the set, too. Duelist Nexus is full of so many just interesting little cards. Just interesting little dudes. I am, I'm looking forward to this coming to the TCG because there's just so many little extra things. Uh, I look forward to them actually releasing support that makes it viable to play Drytron and Earth's Arctic in the same deck. Um, because that ain't happening without a major overhaul. Okay, new Infernoble. Uh, the second, uh, of the new Evolsar main deck monsters, Rios here. Uh, this one, uh, sets your levels and types. So this helps you get your actual Evolsars out more pearly. Uh, the, uh, this is another dinosaur card. It gives, like, a stab boost. It helps to normal summon your guys. Uh, and of course, there's Sword Arm of Dragon. Um, when's the Sword Arm of Dragon retrain, Konami? Where is it? You did all the other level 6 normal dinos. Where's my weird stat, dude? Uh, and speaking of which, we have the upgraded 2 edited King Rex gigantic stat line. Um, not, I don't know if it's a feasible card, but it's, I mean, look at that stat line. My man's huge. What a big boy! What a big brungler! What a big Suliac. That's a trap card. Um This is what happens when I'm filling space. I'll just I'll just find random cards. What is a Suliac, by the way? Another thing for the comments. Okay, here's another Infernoble. Uh this time uh Mr. Holy Man. Uh the other level six unchained fiend. Uh, now in blue flavored. Rios is here. Uh, okay, I was talking earlier about that uh, Rescue Ace spell card that someone's right from the deck. This is it. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that recontextualizes things. And we have, who a version of our plus one, but it's a little spicy secret rare. Look at that beauty right there. Ooh, ooh. All right, that's sick. You're going right over here. You're going to be safe until I can get all of you sleeved up. That's what I forgot to get. I forgot to order sleeves. Folks, whenever you use the coupon code down in the description, make sure you also order sleeves because they're going to look really nice. Okay, uh, here is one of the new uh, Synchron Monsters for the 5D stuff. This is based on Yusei's D-Wheel. Uh, will we get the other one? Here's Pod of Greed, not Pod of Greed, uh, that has just a absolutely ridiculous suite of effects, none of which are going to be practical. Uh, Mikanko Trap Card, um, a, another Battle Trap Card uh, that I has probably, I don't know because it's probably sloughed off of my brain wrinkles, and a Visus Card, uh, Vita, I believe. Vita Carantha, Vita Carantha uh, is the current translation. Um, they're looking pretty sharp pretty sharp. I don't know what their deal is because Vita Carantha just kind of shows up. There's Vita Carantha. Vita Carantha. I think I, I think I got it right. Anyway, they just kind of show up as a card and they're not in any of the actual like other Visus cards right now. They just kind of uh, are now a monster. Uh, however, keep an eye out for the Visus lore video because I've got some pretty spicy thoughts about what's going on. And you're not going to want to miss it, because I think I cracked something that no one else has seen. Okay, so we have our playset of the Two-Headed King Rex. We have another Nemorelia. We have another Transcendental Evolution Pill Beta. Uh, we have the Clear New Worlds Amritara. Um, this is... Okay, if you're seeing this and you haven't seen the video yet, I think it comes out a couple days after this. This is the card that uh, unlocks some information that I don't think anyone's seen before. Uh, if you can figure it out... Uh, make sure that you comment down in the comments and let me know, because I want to see if, um, I've unlocked... <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm putting that on hold for a second. It's Evolzar Roz, the third of the new Evolzar cards. Absolutely fantastic. Generic rank six uh, is basically a Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss for any card. Detaches two materials for it unless its materials are all reptiles and or dinosaurs, in which case you only have to detach a single material, but you can use it for any deck that summons level sixes. Can you imagine any quick effect graveyard removal that might have six levels that everyone is using all of the time? Anyway, that's going to be an important card. All right, uh, Infernoble Holy Man is back. Uh, Blue Flavored Unchained. Uh, Museum Trip to sort. Oh, speaking of Museum Trips, uh, the new Infernoble uh, Arms Almas. Uh, this is one that I believe just replaces itself with any other Infernoble. So, uh, Infernoble Arm, rather. Um, so you can just have even more flexibility for the deck that already had incredibly... Uh, lenient combo lines, and this is, I believe, over top synchro. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I do not remember how most of the new synchro cards work for the 5D stuff. Uh, it incentivizes you to play the dual dragons, uh, not really any of their particular decks, um, but I'm sure someone's going to find some kind of wild combo to... Summon all of them at once and then win the game and then post about it on YouTube forever and ever. We have Dog. We have Red Flavored Unchained. We have the new Nemorelia Trap card, which helps get you all of your Nemorelia cards. Here is uh, a Clear New World. New, uh, Clear New World Full of Stars is the current translation right here. Uh, you've got uh, Vesis in their Amitara form. Uh, there is, um, there's... Uh, Scareclaw Ostra, there's Wilkalos, there's Unicorn. Yeah, Unicorn, you take a knee, buddy. You've caused enough trouble. And here is the Illusion Fusion. Uh, Chimera, the Illusion Mythical Punchalot Beast. Holy cow. Now that's... Now that's some power. I believe it's that one that I said that does, like, the multi-attacks and... Uh, also, there's something involving zeroing out attack, so you're incentivized to zero something out and then punch it three times for, uh, what would that be, 9,300 points of damage, and then you just win. Alright, here's another one of the illusion cards. Uh, several of the material monsters are just meant to act as protection from the graveyard. Uh, here's the new Gaia Synchro, uh, another Evolzar. Uh, Link Flavored Unchained, we have our Unchained Abominable Dude. Uh, they're now in King form. Uh, Link to fantastic stuff going on here. And here's some more Stardust. Stardusting going on here. Sorry, screen went blank there for a second, and I uh, I had to, I had a miniature panic attack there. Like, uh oh, there goes this entire episode. Thankfully, it was not that bad. It was only mostly bad. That's a lie. It wasn't bad at all. Everything came back. I don't need to catastrophize. We're all good here. We're just chilling out. We're opening up cards. All right. What do we got here? We have more dolphins. We have a play set of that. We have another red flavored unchained. We have another Mekonko trap card. Something sinister is going on here. We have another Altergeist card. I'm barely containing my rage. And here is the uh, new pearly rank two. Uh, I, uh, all of the hype for these I keep seeing is based around the new memory card that allows you to, uh, draw a card during your opponent's, uh, standby phase. Uh, I haven't seen anything about the new rank 2 pearly, uh, but it has established itself as one of the best new decks, at least from an OCG standpoint. I'm hearing some conflicting reports, but, uh, something different between TCG and OCG, uh, big shocker. Uh, I never saw that coming. A hundred miles away. How, how did that happen? What was such a big difference between the two regions that Pearly just could not... And there it is! I interrupt myself to bring you Eternal Ice Grave. Now, it doesn't seem to be in anything uh, shinier than a rare. Hopefully, we'll pull something like an alternate shinier version of this. Um, but this is going in the binder. Uh, this is the only lore card for Albaz... In this set, they left a big cliffhanger, uh, 
and they aren't doing anything with it in this set. And this time, it's not just me speculating that kind of stuff. Uh, they made printed material. There was stuff in Master Guide uh, EX3 that was like, this is the beginning of a new adventure. This is only a prologue for the things that are to come. And, you know, the prologue includes... This This feels this feels different. I'm, I'm saying that right now. This feels different. Um... Uh, and so they're, they're teasing a whole new story, and then it's like, okay, well, here's the Eternal Ice Grave. Have fun with that. Visus also doesn't have super much. Uh, I hope this isn't, like, a downturn for lore, like we're getting less of it. Here's Scrap Iron. Not Statue. It's something, but it's the, uh, it's the Red Dragon. Uh, and another Altergeist card. Okay, so, uh, the pack felt different. Uh, it was all in my brain. Uh, it tricked me. Um, I'm gonna be honest, though, like, uh, of all the Altergeists that I, uh, despise, this one I hate the least. It's like, uh, an opposite to Meluseek that covers some things that, um, Meluseek doesn't handle. Uh, it's like a more, more of a recovery card than a search card, so it's a better late-game option. Uh, and like Meluseek, you can just keep recycling it with things like, um, Marionette, I believe. And just keep getting your advantage out of the graveyard, so it's a, it's a pretty sick piece of, uh, support. Um, uh, my burning rage for it is almost as burning as this Infernoble. Uh, the blue Unchained, uh, Mascarena Love Story, two mirrors that are angry with each other, uh, and a hollow version of, uh, another one of the fusions. Now, the thing about the illusion monsters, I've said Chimera several times here, uh, and that is because... That is because it's a bit divergent. Um, the Chimera stuff is based on uh, Chimera, the King of Mythical Beasts, part of the uh, Phantom Beast line that exists. And all of those are like Beast, Beast, Warrior, Wing Beast, that whole tri-type thing going on. Um, the new Illusion cards, uh, uh, the only Illusion one out of the new uh, Mythical Beast stuff is the Fusion, uh, though a lot of their support does work with uh, Illusionist cards. Um, but you can either use the Illusionist version of it, or you can Fusion Summon the Beast Warrior, uh, or Winged Beast. I forget what the typing is, but, like, the classic Chimera. Uh, oof, okay, this is a, this is a funny one I want to talk about in a second. Um, so you can do either one of those. You can go into either version of that, depending on how nostalgic or, um, bold you're feeling. This spell card puts your opponent's monsters... Uh, in their spell and trap zone. This is a very interesting piece of... I, I guess I would say it's removal, right? Because if it's just a back row, it's not doing anything. So I would call it removal without like actually having to trigger any grave or remove from field effects. Like You can put Mirror Jade in the back row and you will not be triggering its board wipe effect. I'm curious to see if Valance used that as like a going second way to enable columns because you can put your own stuff in the back row with it too it's not just your opponent um but uh well, i guess also mech knight can work with that remove opponent's monster put in the spell and trap zone um but also there are some things that require your opponent to have certain cards in like their columns like you push one of their cards back onto their spell and trap zone uh into their spell and trap zone and if there's a card occupying it it gets destroyed and if it's a monster you get to do like bonus burn damage um and you know valance players in the comments let me know if that's actually difficult to pull off but that sounds like something that you're not pulling off regularly um so having a card that just uh puts it in a particular zone and then you punish them for having it in that zone seems pretty helpful all right, so we have the Nemorelia Trap card again. We have, hey, 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 Thestalos, the Shadow Flame Monarch. That's right, Monarchs are getting their 18th wave of support here. Uh, oh, and we have Revolution Synchron, the card that made a million combos. Sync with it from the hand, make a level 7 synchro, do whatever you want with it. AFD is unbanned and is looking good. Yeah, so... Sorry, I gotta talk about this again. Thestalos, the Shadow Flame Monarch, uh, it's it's the biggest one. It doesn't adhere to any of the usual conventions. It is it it has neither 2,400 or 2,800 attack points, so it doesn't work with any of like the Monarch checks 
for anything, but like you can tribute summon one of your opponent's monsters for this thing's tribute summon if you use a monster that was tribute summoned. So it's kind of like how the Mega Monarchs can use a tribute summon monster only. Uh, this just kind of adds a little storm forth to it, which I think is pretty funny. And then it combines Thestalos and Kai's effect. It was the only monarch in this set though. Um, which actually, now that I think about it, is kind of in line with a lot of Monarch stuff, right? Like, they only released one Monarch at a time, and then they only released one Monarch Spell or Trap at a time. So actually, I, b before this very moment, I was like, I'm disappointed they didn't release a whole archetype thing of Monarchs in this set. But, you know, now it kind of makes sense. Now it kind of makes sense. Oh, hey, the new Behemoth. Um, I be What is it? You can normal summon this without tributing, but like it loses stats, but every turn it gains stats. Um, I'm interested to see if that goes anywhere. Uh, potentially big beefy boss monster. I, I forget if it has other effects like removal or something. Um, but whenever... Okay, I, I was going to say, whenever Behemoth shows up, things go wild. I can think of the last Behemoth card that was actually relevant in any kind of meta. But that's probably the closest it's ever gotten. Okay, so we've got this. We've got Chimera. We have the Sword Museum because you gotta show off all your sword. Oh, 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 oh! Alrighty, check this out. Call me Mech Knight Avram. I love this. Look at. All rainbow shiny everywhere. This is uh, this is actually textured. Uh, let me just, like you can see in the. Oh my god! I the camera never does these things justice. Let me get the focus slider on here. This one needs. This one needs carefully. Okay, you can see that, right? You can see all the little bumps across the border. You can see the ridges and the foiling going on back there. The new Hita looks fantastic in this rarity oh my goodness gracious holy calzone i miss ultimates i i miss ultimates. i miss ultimates so much folks do we have i can't i can't not i can't this has to go to sleep i've got one randomly over here we need, to, we, need to, we need to transplant this stuff. This cannot be exposed to Earth's atmosphere. It's too toxic. There we go. There we go. That's the tip. That's the tip. That's, that's, that's standing right there. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! All right. Man, uh, well, I'm starting to think we're not going to get the, uh, the holographic cosmic quasar dragon. Or cosmic blazar dragon, I think it is. All right, um, here is... Oh, I should have readjusted the focus now. And that we've finished talking about our good friend Hita, the new fire charmer. Uh, Cornfield Coatl. Sword Museum, show off your swords. Tree Land, a land for trees. And here is the other Earth's Arctic Drytron crossover card. I believe the more uh, useful one because it just kind of summons... Any, uh, not summons, it's another one that searches your Drytron and Earth's Arctic Spell or Trap cards. Uh, more important for, well, actually not, that's a lie. It's very important for both of them having access to things like Meteornis, uh, Fafnir, uh, Nova in certain ways. And then for Earth's Arctics, uh, having radiation is just a necessity at this point. But you also have, like, Quint Charge, which is very powerful. Okay, uh, Nemorelia Cone Beast, uh, Noah Jenk, uh, Pearly. Uh, the world's as one, uh, and the Siner Dragon themselves, the Red Crimson Dragon. Ooh, shiny, man! And look at all that! Look at all that attack power! It's positively brimming with energy. I wish I, wish I remember what that thing actually did. But look at like it, its text was humongous. You saw it. You saw it with me. No, look, if someone just summons that against me, they'll ju I'll just let them read it off, and I'll just have to trust whatever they say. Um, okay, Altergeist, uh, Altergeist Hatred, Cornfield Quaddle, Pearly, this is like the sixth Pearly card. Uh, New World, full of ass... <laughs> uh, and then Weird Trapple. <clears throat> we have Weird Trapple. 
There we go. That one's there. Oh no, we're down to our last two packs. That can't be. That cannot be. I refuse. I refuse to believe we're down to two packs. It feels like we were just opening this like two minutes ago. Ignore the mounting pile of booster pack trash that's accumulating just off screen, encroaching on our reality. Treeland, Vita, again, Karantha, please, whatever, whatever you're doing, whatever you're planning, please stop it. Please cease and desist. Everyone is just chilling out on their new world. They just got the the the, the treehouse made. Uh, they're opening up an arcade down the street. It's gonna be one of those things where you can pay five bucks and then spend like eight hours there and play all the arcade games you want. Don't ruin that for them. Don't you dare. Okay, folks. Cosmic Blazer Dragon. Cosmic Blazer Dragon. Go ahead. Go ahead, say it's Cosmic Blazer Dragon, because that's what it is. That's what's hiding right here, okay? Check this out. Wow. Okay, um, well, I said under it, but it wasn't like under, under it. It's, it's this one, okay? One second, we're just gonna, we're gonna take a peek. We're gonna take a little peek. Okay. Not a synchro. That looks like a fusion. Pretty sure that's not a ritual. Huh? 2,000 attack, 2,000 defense. Who is that? Who are you? It's the weird vanquished soul thing. Okay, well, the last one didn't have the kind of drama I would have liked, but we walked away with this absolutely, I'm showing this off again. Y'all are, y'all are gonna sit here and enjoy this with me. Where are you? There you are. Oh my gosh. Look at everything about this card. Holy Toledo. This is why we open these, folks. This is why we open these. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we're going to... Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about the... Uh, another thing that you have in here is... Uh, you can just kind of have, like, a proxy version of the cover card on the, on the thing. Ain't that nice? This is what it would have looked like if we had pulled it. But we're going to save that. We might use that as a token somewhere. So we walked away with the... Uh, let's go ahead and get this really focused here. Again, boom. So we have our new Hita. We have the new Siner Dragon, Big Synchro. Thestalus, the Shadow Flame Monarch. We have both of the. Um, you're not there. Where are you? I know we had both of you. Are you? Are you? Are you hiding back in this stack that I put you? I probably did, but I know we have the other. The other Chimera Fusion, we have several versions of the Unchained Link. We've got uh, new uh, French Katana, and we have the Eternal Ice Grave. Not in a super impressive rarity compared to everything else we've seen so far, uh, but I'm looking forward to putting this in the binder. Let me go ahead and see. Do we have another sleeve item around here somewhere? We don't. Okay, well, I'm not going to put it in there without a sleeve. But uh, next time you see me which if you're going to MomoCon, you're definitely going to see me, uh, ask to take a look at it, and you can see in person these fantastic cards uh, that we got here today. I'm going to find some sleeves. We're going to sleeve this up. They're going to look particularly nice and tasty in my binder. Uh, thank you once again to Bai for helping to sponsor this episode. If you want to get all of this stuff as cheaply as you can, make sure that you use my link down below. New signups get a 2,000 yen coupon code to use on their first purchase, and, and it lets them know that I sent them, and that makes me happy because they know that I helped them, and that makes them happy because they got a customer, and that means that they get to help you know, reach out to me and do more of these sessions where I get to open up delicious, wonderful cardboard that I have grown to accustom to. Please, if, if for nothing else, do it so that I can keep opening these cards. Uh, it is one of the many things that brings me joy in life on, on top of all of you. Um, <laughs> that's about all of my rambling. Folks, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, make sure that you check out some links around here to watch some other unboxing videos if you like this one. And I will see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.